Hey, what's going on, guys? Today we're talking about the best-selling cards under five dollars for the Yu-Gi-Oh! The Yu-Gi-Oh! Penny Stock Market Watch. And if you guys don't mind, make sure you guys check out the link for my TCG Player. It's Cards of Connor at TCGPlayer.com. I'm, I'm going to start adding more inventory to it. I, I'm needing to do that. It's just going to be something that I'm going to do. Just load it all up on one big day. But I do still already have inventory on there. So just minor plug. Uh, that I wanted to throw out there. Also, just put the Spirit Charmers uh, deck video, deck profile up. So, make sure you guys check that out, too. But let's just jump right into it. Talking about the new sheriff in town. Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy is now the most selling, sell, sold card under $5. Right? And, and we talked about this a little bit last week. I don't want to dive too much deep into it now. But just the fact of the matter is, is that you can get a free summon of your opponent's monster. Um, a lot of people are playing Phantom Knights right now, and it's a very solid, cheap option. Both of the arrows point down. It doesn't really, it's not too hard to make. And if it's destroyed by opponent's card, you get to search. So there's a lot of great things that this card brings to the table, and that's why it's the best selling card under $5. Now, this card's interesting Sword Soul, Sinister Sovereign. See, and I know we don't want to talk about Sword Soul. It's all everybody talks about Sword Soul, Sword Soul, Sword Soul. But let's take a look at this real quick. First off, it's level 10, right? And if it's if you secret summon you with another worm monster, while this monster's on the field, you draw a card. So it's got that. Um it's got that. Oh, why am I TG Hyper Librarian effect to it, right? Um if your opponent's special summons a monster, except for the damage up, you can banish one of those monsters and inflict twelve thousand damage to your opponent. When your opponent activates a spell or trap card, you can banish that card. And if you do, inflict 12, 1,200, excuse me. Um, you can only use each effect once per turn, right? So the draw is only once per turn. The banish is only once per turn. And the spell and trap is once per turn. But this is this is very much, like, bored, you know. This is very much has, like, game-ending type effects. Now, obviously, Forbidden Droplets dark ruler no more that plays around this and at the end of the day the 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 spell and trap effects uh is a little bit worse right because you gotta think like your opponent's special summons let's say you're playing i don't know um tri brigade and your opponent summons out the link to tri brigade monster and that gets banished that's kind of big it's not super duper big but the effect does still go off Right now, if you banish the spell of trap, like let's say your opponent plays Lightning Storm or Regeki, it still resolves, it just gets banished and you inflict 1200. So I think that's why we don't see this card above five dollars. It is just interesting though to see. Um, this card it has bottomed out at 317, 325, and some people have bought this at four bucks, four dollars. And if we look at this real quick, it's not out of the realm of possibility that it could end up being like a five dollar card. As long as Sword Soul doesn't go anywhere, especially if other parts of the deck gets hit, this card could start to bump itself up in price. It's not good enough to merit a reprint, so that's number one, right? But it, it is good enough to where if Sword Soul has to turn to it, because some part of their engine uh, makes relying on Synchro 10s a little bit better, this could definitely be a good alternative for Sword Soul. So it's just something to... To keep an eye on going forward, it's not a coincidence that this is the third best-selling card under $5. And the next card I want to talk about, Ghost Ogre Snow Rabbit, still climbing. Dual Devastator version, I've talked about it all the time. And now we're getting to the nitty-gritty with this. And I, I want to say, um, we'll do this one because it's a little bit cheaper. I, I, I want to give credit to M. Cole 40 because I feel like he had an impact on this. Uh, talking about I mean, a lot of lot of YouTubers, I'm sure, talking about this. But but Mco40 just recently, like over the weekend, talked about how good is DDDs, right? And I think that that discussion is why we've seen not a major jump in price, but you got you know it it, it all counts. It's this penny stock. It's a penny stock for a reason, right? So, twenty eight cents to seventy two cents, or now even ninety five cents. We're looking at almost a dollar. If you were here at this spot, you could have bought 10 of these for $3. And now you can sell those 10 for $10. 
And that $7 profit may not seem like a lot, but if we scale that even greater, now we're talking about, like, say we bought, a, you know, 100 for 30. Now we're selling 100 at a dollar. Now we're making $70 profit. Or if we bought 1,000 at 300, now we're making a $700 profit. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. And I know you might think, well, is this FOMO? I really don't think so. I think that this deck, I mean, we could take a look at the, the card, you know, gaining attack. You could, this is a free special summon, draws a card. You know, they all do a lot of cool things. And last week I mentioned that DDDs probably won't be very good, right? But they might still be good. And the, the thing is, is you got to ask yourself, or unless you're playing, you know, Sword Soul, Phantom Knights, what deck are you going to play, right? Because if you're not going to play those two decks, you're going to play a deck that either is one fun, right? Who, you know, if you remember that, uh, fun. A, or two, has the potential to beat meta decks with the right pilot. And I feel like DDD falls under that category. I think under the right pilot, making the right plays with the right tech options for their play style, DDDs can, can maybe not beat any deck, but can beat a lot of decks in the room. And it's, it's interesting to see that it's a lot of DDD cards are on the rise here right the next card i want to talk about is this card liberal mancer first appearance it's a ritual based deck i just i you know i i like to try to keep track of every Yu-Gi-Oh archetype in existence but it's kind of hard sometimes and every now and again one pops up like this where we see this archetype you could view a rich special one that says add a spell so it's just like a regular ritual based deck uh you can attack directly so it's one of those type of things you can set a trap card okay are the trap cards any good i'm literally just looking at this archetype in general for the very first time here on this penny stock marker watch because i saw that this card the liberal mancer first appearance was on the list and now i'm curious because usually when a card like this is on the list you want to talk about penny stocks it's looking at you right in the face right you know we go back to this card which apparently is the biggest one the geek boy uh, or not the biggest but the most expensive one uh, you can get three copies really not from anybody that's interesting uh, this is an interesting penny stock target as well um, but you can get three copies 399 plus 150 so that's 499 through 550 549 um you get three copies 549 a piece that's 15 dollars um we scoot on over to here that's technically a little bit over right but you could get it from three different sellers too um just keep in mind this uh free shipping over five dollars thing obviously if you want to build this archetype um but other than that it's literally pennies like other than that's 35 cents uh, 30 times three is 90 cents. 10 cents is 30 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 cents. So 30, 30, 30, 30, uh, plus 30, 30, 30, 30. So it's 30 times seven, which is two dollars and ten cents. And then we're talking about this card, Liberal Mancer First Appearance. And this is, I mean, right now it's sitting at a dollar, right? So that's three dollars, uh, plus you know the two dollars is five dollars plus the five dollar card. We're looking at twenty five dollars after shipping after handling for an entire archetype and that sounds fun i don't know how good it is I, I was taking a look at some of those cards i guess we can go back forward i said i was gonna look at the trap card real quick for someone who's just like me and seeing this for the first time when your opponent activates a card target a liver monster which you, you control return it negate the activation then special summon a monster from your hand or graveyard so it's not like the greatest uh it's not the greatest but it's not that bad and like I said, there's two reasons why you're not running, you know, like Virtual World, Sword Soul, Phantom Knights, Dragon Link, excuse me, uh, Eldritch, Skill Drain decks. There's two reasons why you're not running the deck. One is you think the deck is good enough to beat uh, meta. Two, it's a fun deck. And some people really like the Ritual Summoning Mechanic. So it is an interesting thing, though, too. Archetypes like this, um, I do just want to say this one, one more thing about Libromancer. Um, they, could, they, they go one of two paths, and 
Unfortunately, I don't have a crystal ball. I, I try to predict the future as best I can on the market watch, but they have one of two paths, and, and you really just don't know. Either they get great support down the line, and they go from being a super cheap deck to a super expensive deck, because they never got any great reprints, and all of the key cards are super duper expensive from older sets. Or, they are always cheap. Yusenju has always been cheap. Aqua Actrix has always been cheap. So, just keep that in mind. This could be a fun little archetype that actually randomly gets great support and turns into a tier 1 strategy. Or, it could always be kind of bad. Right? Um, the final card I want to talk about, just wanted to look at the whole thing real quick before we talk about Cosmic Cyclone. Um, yeah, there's, there's obvious reasons, I feel like, why this card is seeing a surge in popularity. First, Lord of the Sky Prism, or King of the Sky Prism, whichever one. I saw, but I see both, I don't know what the name is, right? It's like VFD and True King of All Calamities. But, this card plays around that card. Because that card stops set cards from being destroyed, it doesn't stop set cards from being targeted. Right, on top of that, now you can't get your sets off of, specifically, Eldritch continuous trap card so it's not a coincidence that cosmic cyclone is is on the rise it's not a coincidence that the dual devastator version see i mean there's a lot of them right there's there's this for 225 there's 225 copies of this 268 copies of this so it's probably going to be under five this version is probably gonna be under five dollars for a while but how much longer because once we go past that odds are if it starts to hit that four dollar price let's just do Let's just see if we can find this guy right here. Yeah, let's just click on that puppy. Yeah, once we get past that, we have these four right here that'll probably hold the line. Now we're starting to talk about $3, $4, and obviously once it hits this spot right here, um, we might start seeing other people put their cards into play. So I, it, it might not shoot up too super high, but this is what the card was worth just two months ago. Right, or three months ago now. It was worth $2. It shot up, went down, shot up, went down. And it's been on the steady rise for a while. And the better Eldritch gets, the better all versions of Cosmic Cycle will be. Now, we have the Structure Deck Mechanized Madness, which I don't have time to talk about this Structure Deck today. But if you didn't get that, you know, when you had the chance, it's unfortunate. But still try to see if you can find it. Structure Deck Cyberlink. Uh, Suction Deck, Battle City Box, all of them, all versions of Cosmic Cyclone right now are on the rise, and all of them are over $2. And so, as we see these, the Dual Devastator versions start to go away, as we see the, the common versions start to go away, and that's the thing, that's why I've been such a big fan of Dual Devastator, that's why I want to talk about Cosmic Cyclone, it's another card from Dual Devastator that's super popular, and... We go back to the top 24 best-selling cards under $5 in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Penny Stock uh, market right now. Obviously, I talked about Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Also, Effect Veiler and Cosmic Cyclone, right? So, if you guys have been, you know, watching this channel uh, for a while now, you've been watching the Penny Stock Market Watch, I've been talking about Dual Devastator over and 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 over again. I should have honestly taken my own advice, too. I just never was able to find one. But if you were able to find one, now you're starting to see the return on the investments, the ROIs coming in. Because Ash Blossom and Joy Springs, also from that set, is on the rise. And if we just look at Dual Devastator real quick before we close out this, this Market Watch, this is, I mean, it's just, even if you just kept the box, even if you just kept the box, a while ago, this box was super cheap. This box was low 50s, and now, now it's $70. So even if you just had the box, you could have made a $20 profit. But I think if you open the box, you could do a little bit better. There's a lot of amazing cards in here, and they're starting to fly off the shelf. And it doesn't look like that's going to stop anytime soon. So if you, you know, it might be FOMO now, it might be too late now, but if you invested earlier when I said, get, try to get as many dual devastator boxes as you can, especially if you get them for that $40 price tag, which is what they were originally, which is crazy because they used to be worth like $37 way back when they first came out. But that's how the market fluctuates. That's how the market works. But let me know what you guys think. What are the best selling cards that you're watching for? 
under 5,000. Let me know in those comments down below. Make sure you guys click that like button to show your support for the channel. Subscribe for even more content. But most importantly of all, have a good day.